What do you do if you need the biggest monitor possible? Maybe you already have a 32 inch here and you're thinking to yourself, man, this is just too cramped. I need more space. Well, you now have two options in 49 inch wide aspect ratio monitors. Here you've got the Samsung CHG90 and here you've got the Dell UltraSharp 49. Same size of monitor, same aspect ratio, but there's actually a lot of major differences between these two which will sway which one you purchase. So the first major point here is resolution. The Dell is a 5120 by 1440 resolution, whereas the Samsung is a 3440 by 1080 resolution. And that means the Dell has almost twice as many pixels as the Samsung. Another really good way of thinking about this is that the Samsung is basically the same as sticking two 1080p 27 inch monitors side by side with no bezel. Now over here, you're sticking to 27 inch 1440p monitors side by side with no bezel. So you're getting a lot more pixels over here. Now, the consequence of that, you might notice here, we have quite a few windows here open on the Dell, quite a few open on the Samsung, and they're on the Samsung, they're, they look bigger, right? And that's just the way they open by default. Uh, we're not resizing them substantially here. You can simply see more on the Dell more clearly because it's sharper and the windows you open are gonna be, this look that much more refined. You can have tons of stuff open, lots of small fonts, and as long as your eyesight is up to the task, you can see them all clearly. That's something you can't really do on the Samsung. However, there is a bit of a flip side to this, a downside to having all those pixels on the Dell, and that's if you want a game. If you want a game, you're going to need a beefier graphics card to do it on the Dell than you will on the Samsung. So speaking of gaming, that brings us to our other major point in this comparison. The Samsung, though it has a lower resolution, that lower resolution allows it to have a higher refresh rate of 144 hertz. It also has support for AMD's FreeSync frame synchronization technology. So that means it's basically going to give you a smoother gaming experience, something that looks more fluid. The Dell, is a 60 hertz monitor, just your usual monitor. Nothing particularly wrong with that, but you're not getting that extra fluidity you get with the Samsung. Also, another really interesting point is that these two monitors have really comparable image quality, but overall, the Samsung is better for gaming. It has a little bit of a higher contrast ratio, which adds a nice sense of depth to the games, but perhaps more importantly, the Samsung has HDR. Now, HDR is not really a big deal on computers right now because the port is not really there. There's not a lot of content for it, but gaming is an area where you do get some pretty good support for HDR. Uh, the Battlefield series, for example, supports HDR. And when you play it in HDR on the Samsung monitor, wow, like it is a really big difference. You actually do notice a much more immersive, much greater sense of depth on this Samsung with HDR than you want any monitor that does not support it. Now there are some differences in how you use these monitors day to day as well. They have very similar video connectivity, but the Samsung has fewer USB ports than the Dell does, and the Dell has USB type C. So the Dell monitor can actually work as kind of a laptop uh, docking station as well as a monitor. The Samsung, I mean, technically you could kind of use it as that, but you're gonna have a really limited USB port selection. So it probably wouldn't work for most people. Another important point is the curve on these monitors. Actually, there's a much more dramatic curve on the Samsung than there is on the Dell. So the Dell is more like a big desktop that you can just move things around on, uh, whereas the Samsung provides a very immersive experience. And you will notice that, especially when you're looking at movies and in games. Now, with all this said, these are both very well-built monitors. They have great stands that are really solid and have a lot of adjustability. So in that regard, they're pretty much tied. You can get one of these monitors and you don't have to really worry about buying a third-party stand. You're gonna have pretty much everything you need in the box. Now let's go to the final and one of the most important points and that's price. You might expect that these monitors would be expensive and they are, they are very expensive. The Samsung is $1,000, so that's a lot, but hold on, hold on. The Dell is $1,700. It does sell for a bit less online right now, uh, around $1,550, uh, the last sale I saw. But yeah, it's a lot more expensive and they're both very expensive to begin with. So how do you decide between them? Well, 
it, it comes down to basically what you want to use them for. The Samsung is the gaming and entertainment monitor. If you just want to play games and you want a really immersive experience, then this is the one to go for. The resolution is, you know, it's a little low and that can be a bit of a bummer, but you're probably not going to mind it too much in games as long as you turn the anti-aliasing uh, on. And also you're really going to like the HDR and you're really going to like that refresh rate. Now with the Dell, you know, that's really your monitor for productivity. It's for high-end workstations. It's for, you know, business users that want to have like 20 spreadsheets open and whatnot. So that is the way you're going to want to go. Even though it's more expensive, the extra resolution is definitely going to be worth the price. Now, if we have to recommend one, we do go towards the Samsung. I mean, let's face it, it's a 49 inch monitor. It's less expensive. It gets a slightly higher score in our review, largely because of that value proposition. But you do need to think really seriously about what you need before you buy either of these 49 inch monitors. Thanks for watching. Obviously this is a versus video. So uh, we want to know like which one would you buy? Do you actually own one of these? Have you made the decision already? Let us know in the comments. And if you liked what you see, don't forget to subscribe.